What time is it? What is the time? Where is your clock? Because mine says it's 11.59. So you better pray that you don't become my prey. Because I am the predator. Careful you be the wick. And I snuff out your light. Because my weapon slings faster than the speed of light. Faster than you could define. Faster than a politician could resign. Faster than a raster man could lose his hairline. Faster than Bolt could cross the finish line. Because I am the lady midnight robber. Who, of course, never caught your eye because I don't have a BET Bumsy. And my little black dress is too conservative for society to notice me. To some, my speech may sound like Miss Andre, yet I promise that I make no apology for evoking anxiety within the guilty. No, this supermodel doesn't cater to your superficial aesthetic desires, yet... I am the caterer who will send you to the morgue on a silver platter. So bow down and show some gratitude. Consider yourselves to have been rescued, for I could have been more vile, more crude. I could have carved you out with the tip of my knife, bake your daughter, and barbecue your wife. Instead, I'll be a woman of more civil persuasion, enthralling you with academic conversation about compulsory education and my top 10 techniques for throttling a victim. I am the lady of the night whose company you won't pay for by the hour because the world simply can't stand any woman with semblance of power. They can stand you as employee, but hardly as employer. But I ensure you that my proletariat days are over. Since the last time a decent man in suit and tie thought it was his place to rub my thigh and whisper sweet nothings in my ear, before he boldly threatened my career in the confines of high-rise offices where he felt I was just another set of orifices to infiltrate. Because what more is a woman good for? Right? Well, I was done being the victim, so I became the victor. <laughs> the world is my business. I am the boss. I take in anything I want and who vex loss. I am the star. The world is my stage and I pay in three dollars less than minimum wage. The doctor might say I'm moving madly, but I'll tell you I'm moving manly. I've adopted the attitude that has imbued the mind of masculinity for years past and years to come again. With this sense of entitlement that badgers ladies on the street and the sick minds that lure them into the sheets of concealment, lies and bitter goodbyes that they never subscribed to. I am the Shantwell for the stories of women that have gone untold. The lament of the lady when I dared bury my clothes for she knows that her temple has been ravaged and ravaged by savage hands that defile her rite of passage. After his tool of choice has done the jam damage, he zips up his trousers and she feels like garbage in her dirty linens. Lord knows all she wants to do is bury those clothes. She wishes for the grim reacher, reaper to reach her at 4G speed, for only death can supersede the emptiness brought on by a man who would demand her very essence. I, the Lady Midnight Rubber, I'm the griot for the dirty secrets smothered by the snouts of delinquent mothers and advantageous stepfathers. I am the gatekeeper of hell, skilled in castration and public humiliation. I neuter mangy mutts of men who can't control their canine instinct to copulate without consent. You try to tell me to lengthen my skirt and pull up my neckline. Well, I think you should swiftly resign until you tell your sons that what's mine is mine and he's out of line to stare at, touch, or penetrate at his own whim or think of a lady as a service owed to him for having captured his perverted attention. They say vengeance is a dish best served cold.
So I'll make you to swallow mouthfuls of freezing fire. If it is your heart's desire to intrude the underclothes of innocent little boys and credulous little girls for every Calvin Klein who has been so asinine as to uncover Victoria's secrets before she had a chance to share it with someone out of love. In the context of marriage, is this kind of backwards inspiration that sparks my domination as I will be the one to ensure that their coffee is brewed black and slick with heavy arsenic as bitter and dark as the hollow space that rests to the left of my chest where my cardiac rests undisturbed by the undeserving villains of this society. Ladies, look at me, the Duchess of Death in the eye without fear, because we live in a time where nothing can compare to the stare of men in pH taxis and dark alleys, for she has been trained to walk through the valley of the shadow of death where not even gunshots shock the woman anymore. The fears are not the same as before. Rather, she has to visit Mount Hope to deliver new life and hope that there's a slim chance she'll make it out alive or that she can play mass in sweet tea and tea without her lifeless body being found under a tree. <sighs> Don't make me start on he whose rage raises his hand in aggressive displays of male domination, male manipulation, male nastiness, striking the woman like a bowling pin that needed discipline. Those mocking pretenders perish at my feet. He will suffer because Miss Seely told Harpo to beat me. Harpo and meet his match until he meets me. Good evening, Harpo. Let me greet thee. I, be, I believe you're trying to bark up the wrong tree for any man who feel they could step to me will tuck their tail between the legs and flee for I am the lady midnight rubber. So just play a drum, Mr. Drummer.